I think that there is a mis uh, um, a miscommunication of mission of the industry when the trade associations get in front of the public and say, we're concerned about the public, we want to make sure, their concern is about their stockholders. So why not tell the public that? I think the public could understand if they understood better that this is an industry that's driven by profits, and the profits ultimately be benefit the public. Our big challenge by far and away is uh, how do we uh, retain focus on execution and be successful in the first business versus the value capture of going after multiple opportunities because windows open and close very, quick, very quickly. Um, and if you're shooting for a $3 million valuation, almost by definition have to be going after multiple shots on goal. I know you're a public company, but notwithstanding that, what's your next company? Well, I think, um, you know, obviously, assuming assuming uh, my board gets fed up with me tomorrow and says, go do something different, quite possibly. It's very possible. <laughs> uh, the, the big part of it is making biology more rational. And for us, that actually means uh, decorating a lot of the biological pathways, is understanding deeply all the interactions, not a single node, but what's up and down from a particular area in a pathway, and then completely beginning to kind of elaborate things. If you can recover the heart, you send them home without any wires, any batteries, any need to have another surgery, and that's the best option for patients. It's also the most cost effective to the systems as well as to the hospital. George Sodico created the words uh, first uh, uh, synthetic neural sealant. So, uh, uh, what that means is a fancy way of sort of closing the membrane that surrounds the brain. Uh, if you think about the most simplistic way to think about these things is you know, you've got a puncture in your tire and you've got patches and you can close those things, but when you try to stitch these membranes of organs that are carrying fluid inside the body, and there is no leak proof way of doing this. So we created the spray on patches, it's simply polymerizing systems. Our, um, our direct to consumer advertising campaign effective April 1st. In the next 30 days, we saw a 47% lift in the amount of people that came onto Thermage's website. We then were able to track that through because we do focus groups of people that have come on and we're able to find out how many procedures that represents. And I can actually tell you the doctors that they went to. You might have some component in that particular over the counter product and someone else is going to have the derivative of that, of that product and say, we have this too, and by the way, we have 15 other components that happen to be even better with all the antioxidants and other anti-aging herbal uh, medicine components. And it's going to be very difficult to differentiate yourself on the margin where there's really no control about the claims that are made. So the last job I had was uh, in 1978. I was an engineer, an engineering manager at Raytheon. And, um, had filed uh, a number of patent applications on, on Raytheon's behalf. And Raytheon's policy for inventors was a ge very generous one. You got a $100 check. Most companies at the time gave you a dollar because you had to have some compensation. So we got $100. <laughs> and I said, you know, if I come up with one invention a month, that could be $1,200 a year. And uh, the first one of these actually caused sales to double. You know, and what did I get? I got a $5,000 raise. That's when I became an entrepreneur. I saw a tremendous <laughs> disconnect. The $100 of patent wore off very quickly. Yeah. If you think about more personalized medicine or less impersonal medicine, as uh, I've heard Ed talk about it, are, are we moving, are we possibly, by moving towards this more personalized medicine, are we moving away from the blockbuster company and moving towards mid-sized pharmaceutical companies? 
Is that, is that going to be one of the outcomes of this? Is that we're going to have son and daughter of Pfizer? <laughs> First of all, it's just extending the current use of stem cells. So our current use of amyotic stem cells is still very limited. And we, tens of thousands of people, have their lives saved every year. But frankly, still the majority of people who need such a transplant don't get it. They can't find a match. Mm -hmm. okay. We don't have adequate uh, cell numbers. Those, that can, that's actually a near-term opportunity that can be overcome. So if there were regular meetings between biotech and, and venture leaders, and scientists, and we've done a little bit of this at, at Children's, taking specific groups and then inviting a bunch of people in, and those have actually resulted in companies.